Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi Jong and today we are going through a few new products and these are things that I have been using for a while, so these are not first impressions. I've used everything here for at least one week. Now I, you know, as you'll see in some of the close-ups, my eyes are a little bit red and sore, my allergies have been out of control, and I'm hoping I don't have any sort of eye infection or anything, but because of that, I am staying away from eyes. So no eye products today. What we are going to feature are the new Jones Road Tinted Face Powders. These were gifted to me. Thank you so much to Jones Road. They also sent me the powder brush, so we've got those. We also have the new, I have two shades of the new Makeup by Mario Soft Pop Plumping Blush Veil. So we're gonna look at those. We're gonna take a quick, very brief look at the Clay de Peau. This is the protective lip treatment, the SPF 25 lip balm. We also have one of the new lip glosses from Suku. So the new lip gloss formula came out relatively recently and they have two new shades launching on June 8th. So Suku sent me this one, which is shade 102 and 103 is the other one that is launching on the 8th. They're both gonna be fairly sheer color. So we're gonna take a look at this. It looks white in the tube. It looks, you know, it's pretty clear, but there is something special about it. So we're gonna take a look at that as well. And then the last thing that we're gonna be taking a look at is the BK Beauty Angie Hot and Flashy Concealer Brush. This is A506. BK Beauty sent this to me, so thank you to them. And let's go ahead and get started. We are going to start off with the Makeup by Mario blushes. So these are their cream blushes. And I picked up two shades. Now, first of all, packaging on these, this is plastic. You have a frosted glass or frosted plastic window here. And it is a click closure. And this is the shade Barely Blushing. These are not refillable, by the way. You can see they are huge pans, though. And here's Barely Blushing. And you can see that this is kind of more of like a nude peachy shade. So it kind of looks a bit more like a nude pink online to me. Um, but it is a bit, it's a bit more of a nude peach. It's very natural looking. It's a very light shade. This is going to work for fair skin tones. But I think once you, even like some of the light skin tones, it'll work for. But once you're light getting into like closer to medium, it's not going to work. So this is really going to be best for like the lightest skin tones because this is a product you can build up a little bit and I'll show you that in the demos in a minute, but it's not one that truly sets down. So you don't want to build it up too much. This one here is called Perfect Pink and this is kind of like your beautiful pop of, a, you know, like a cool tone pink here. So I've actually been wearing these together most of the time. I use the Barely Blushing kind of back here on the cheekbone and then the Perfect Pink as a pop on the cheek. Both of these though can be very subtle and right now I actually have uh, Barely Blushing on but I have powder dusted over it because I wanted to show you you know, even though when you put this on without the powder, which I'll show you in just a second, <laughs> you get this beautiful dewy sheen, but you still get this really nice soft illumination. I have no highlighter on. So you get a soft illumination still if you put a little bit of powder over it and it will improve longevity. So let's talk a little, about, a little bit about these details while we look at the cheek swatches here. And for the cheek swatches, I did the right side with fingertip application and the left side, I used the Sonia G Mini Base Brush for application. Now, while we're looking at these here, they are made in Italy. They have a one year shelf life and we have five grams of product. So it's quite sizable for a cream blush. Now, Makeup by Mario does already have cream blush sticks. How are these different? Well, the cream blush sticks are going to be a little bit of a thicker formula. These are gonna be a little bit thinner. Um, I have not used it, but there's like a, a skin enhancer veil. That's supposed to be like the same type of formula. So if you've used that, um, this is going to be very similar in texture. It's a very thin, dewy type of texture. You know, it, it has a very thin, sheer layer. It's not sticky at all, which is really nice, but it also does not fully set. So wear time on this for me, it will last you know, about six hours or so, but I do see fading by the end of the day. So it's definitely something to note that, at least on my skin, it does not last the entire day. I get longer longevity if I 
dust it with some powder on top like I did today and then you know I can get a full eight to ten hours but it is going to be more more of a diffuse look in that in that application manner so overall do I like these yes now these are called a plumping blush veil they are supposed to plump your cheeks while you use it I have not noticed any sort of plumping effect with these personally, um, but I also do not have super thin cheeks, so uh, maybe it would be more noticeable on somebody else, but for me, I don't notice anything with that. But I do think that they are a nice, soft veil of color. So, you know, this is not gonna be a super pigmented blush. If you do want something more pigmented, take a look at the blush sticks. And let's take a look at some comparisons with some of the blush sticks. All right, so we're going to take a look at a few of the blush sticks. So these are the blush sticks, and you have, you know, packaging on this is plastic as well. These turn up. There, there are times, though, when this um, turning fe feature, after a while, kind of, like, doesn't perform as well. So just something to know. It does have a removable, detachable brush on the other end, which I think is fantastic because it's easy to remove for cleaning. So let's swatch a few of the, these. This one here is Pale Petal. And you can see that this is going to be a warmer tone pink than the perfect pink in the blush veil. And you can see that they both have a sheen to them, but the blush veils have a little bit more of that translucent shine to them. And color is definitely going to be more pigmented here. This is definitely more of a cream texture, whereas this is thinner, almost like... You know, it has more of a serum type texture to it, yet not as liquidy as a serum. But, you know, it doesn't have that thickness, that viscosity that a cream would have. Now, a few more shades to compare. This one here, let's go with um, Dusty Rose here. And you can see that this doesn't quite go with any of these, but when I was looking at swatch pictures originally, I was thinking that Barely Blushing was going to be a little bit more similar to this. I didn't think it was gonna be like a, a dupe for Dusty Rose, but I thought it was gonna have a bit more rose in it, uh, like that one. Now, another one that I wanted to look at here, this is Earthy Pink, and this is actually one that I use a ton. You can see this is similar to the Dusty Rose, but it has some red in it. So this is going to be warmer than both Barely Blushing and Perfect Pink. And then the last one I want to take a look at, this is Raspberry. So this is kind of the pink pop shade in the Cream Blush 6. You can see this is going to be more vibrant. It's also a cool tone pink, but it has, you know, a little bit less blue in it than the Perfect Pink does. So I just want to show you how the shades complement each other, but do not actually match. And one of the great things about this is you could totally do a nice soft, you could use these blush veils for like a highlighter. You could use them, you know, kind of all over and then concentrate a little bit of color with the cream blush stick, you know, like on, on the apples and so forth. And, you know, they work well together. So mixing them, you can get kind of a diffuse look with the blush veil. You could tap a little bit of the cream blush on, which by the way, does last all day on me. So they work well in tandem or separately depending on what you're going for. So overall, would I recommend these? I would, I like these. I think these are a nice product. Are they going to be, you know, my favorite cream blush product? No, you know, honestly, I, I think they're really nice. They're ones that I would pick up. I would pick up more, I would, actually would love to see like a, a more lavender shade from this and I would definitely pick that up and wear that all the time. But overall, I think they are a nice product. So I think they are worth looking into if something like that is what you are looking to incorporate into your collection. Now let's go ahead and move on. And I want to take a second to just take a look at this Clay de Peau lip balm. So I've actually been using this for a couple of months now and I wanted to try this, but it is pretty expensive for a lip balm. I can't remember the price off the top of my head, but I remember I waited for a sale to pick this up. So this one was, is four grams of product. It's made in the US. And you can see here, you know, I've used it, but I haven't like made a huge dent in it. So this is the majority of the product here. This is a nice lip balm. It's SPF 25. It is sheer. So that's one sheer layer there. You can see you're not getting a white cast with this. 
and I'll show you that lip demo in a second so you can just see when you pile on a lot of product that you're still not really getting any of that white cast. But I do have a problem with this. The formula itself is okay. It feels kind of like a basic lip balm. I don't notice anything truly special on the lips. But my problem is the packaging. I bought this to keep in my purse so that, you know, I have an SPF lip balm with me at all times. But this cap does not stay on securely. It is constantly falling off and... You know, I just, I don't like that. So this is no longer a handbag lip balm. And I just wanted to share that because it is a pricey investment. So if you are looking for one to keep in your handbag, I would not recommend this one for that purpose. So let me go ahead and show you the lip swatches of this. So the active ingredients for this product, we have avobenzone at two and a half percent, octanoxate at 4.9 percent, and octocrylene at three percent. And according to Clay de Poe, it's supposed to help prevent sunburn and, you know, decrease the risk of skin cancer and early skin aging caused by the sun. And again, I think it's a nice lip balm. Texturally, it's going to be a thin texture. When I first picked it up, you know, the first few applications felt a little bit stiffer, a little bit more waxy. But I've, as I've used it more and it's gotten a little bit softer, it has a little bit more of a buttery texture, but it's still gonna be very thin. It has a little bit more of an oily texture in comparison. So thin, lightweight lip balm, very nice uh, texturally, just unfortunately the packaging on this is kind of a pain in the butt. While we're looking at lips, let's go ahead and move on to the Suku lip gloss. So I love these Suku lip glosses. These are called the treatment wrapping uh, lip glosses and they are made in Japan like all Suku products. This one here is shade 102 and all the treatment wrappy lip, lip balms they have kind of this matte texture that has an ombre finish to shiny at the bottom and you can see here that this one actually has white with some sparkle in here and one of the things that makes this shade in particular unique from other white sparkly lip glosses is the color of the shimmer. The color of the shimmer is actually white. A lot of times you'll see sim a silver or even gold, sometimes like pink, but you have a little bit of a white frosty look here. I actually think this would be perfect for holiday season to give you a little bit of that kind of like snow frosted look on the lips. But I do have a couple of lip demos here so you can see this on bare lips and then I'm wearing it on top of a uh, lipstick now so you can see the difference that it makes. So as you're looking at the demo, you can see that this applicator is really nice and easy to use. It has a lot of flexibility in there and it does have an, a curvature inside the flocked portion. So you can either, you know, have a, a lot of product or a little bit depending on which part of the applicator you use. So I think it's a really nice applicator a lot to go with these particular lip glosses. Now both of the shades in this collection, these are technically part of the summer collection. These are both going to be fairly sheer. You're not going to get a lot of color or pigment from these. In this particular line, they do have some shades that are very sheer and they also have some that are more pigmented. So definitely, you know, take a look if you're looking at these, just make sure you're getting the type of opacity that you would like with these. Now, as for the actual formula, these are a really nice non-sticky lip gloss. I find them to be very comfortable. They're calling them a treatment wrapping lip gloss because they do have, you know, skincare benefits and so forth. I find these to be very hydrating, smooth, and comfortable on the lips. They're not sticky. Wear time is going to be comparable to any other lip gloss, you know, but I particularly really like these. So these are ones that I've been reaching for a lot and I don't notice any particular fragrance or anything with these. So that's definitely something great. That's one of the great things about Suku products is you know the lack of fragrance. So thank you so much to Suku for gifting me these. These are set to launch on June 8th. However, Cult Beauty has already launched these. So they have both shades of the lip gloss available on Cult Beauty right now, but these should be available June 8th at other retailers for Suku products. That would include Selfridges, Liberty London, and Harrods. So let's go ahead and move on. We are going to take a look at the Jones Road powders. So Jones Road was kind enough to send me two of their new tinted face powders. And I have to say my favorite thing about these is the packaging here. So we screw the lid off, right? And then you have this little divider here. This twists open. So you have one half with the little holes and then the other half doesn't. You can just kind of close that up. 
So you can really, you know, specify how much product you want to let out because I love to tap it into the lid. And a lot of times, you know, you get too much out at once. So that I think is a great feature. I really appreciate that. I picked up two shades. Let's go ahead and swatch these. So this one here is white, but it is called untinted. So this is going to be, well, you know what, let's put it, we'll put them down here. So this is going to be your translucent powder. And let me just kind of buff some there. And you can see that you can truly get a translucent look with the untinted. Now this one here is the pink. And I think pink is great for brightening. And it also, you know, like I particularly really like it under the eyes. For people with warmer skin tones, this is a great way to kind of cool things off. Sometimes you need to neutralize something. So here's the pink though. You can see it's also pretty translucent. You can't, I can't even see the white and the pink on the parts that I buffed off, buffed out. So you can see the shade of pink itself is a pretty neutral pink. This can definitely be used for correction. They also have, you know, a variety of other shades in this line. So you can use them for a variety of purposes. Let's take a look at a couple demos here. So in this first demo, I wanted to show you the white versus the pink. So we're doing one side with each. So you can kind of just see the difference on the skin. Sometimes it looks a little different from far away. Now, according to Jones Row, just a few details here. These are made in the US and we have a one year shelf life and we have six and a half grams of product. So these retail for 28 US dollars. There are eight shades in this powder and according to Jones Road, it is powder reinvented. Tinted face powder is a finely milled, ultra lightweight setting powder designed to seamlessly blend into your skin to set your foundation, color correct where needed, and minimize shine without looking like you're wearing powder. It's exactly what you've come to expect from Jones Road, a fresh modern take on a traditional staple. So, you know, they have a guide on their website as to what they what shades they recommend for different skin tones and so forth. So for fair and light skin tones, the untinted and pink are the two recommended shades. And there are additional shades recommended for light skin tones as well, medium, tan, and dark skin tones. So definitely, you know, if you're interested in those, take a look. Now, as for the powder itself, I think this is a really nice setting powder. It's a really great kind of like basic powder to have. Is it going to be my favorite setting powder? I personally still prefer my Suku and Givenchy loose powders. Those are my two favorite loose powders. Uh, also the Kogundo, actually, I really like the Kogundo ones. But, you know, though, th this is a really nice powder as well. So my favorite thing is definitely going to be the packaging on these. I think this is a really great setting powder to have, especially if you want to try out different shades and so forth. But if you're looking for like the finest milled powder, um, you know, I don't think I, I think it's a finely milled powder, but I don't think it is the finest milled powder that I have. However, that being said, I think this is actually a great product to have, especially if you travel a lot because of the packaging, because the price point is very fair. It's a really great value for what you're getting here with the powder and the fact that there are a variety of different shades that you can choose from in here as well. It is very difficult to find a pink setting powder. And I think Jones Road really nailed that. Now, as for the untinted, you know, in that that particular shade, those you you find pretty much everywhere. But there are certain shades here that you're not going to find in other places. And that's what's really going to set this particular product apart from other setting powders, in my opinion. So let's go ahead. And, uh, you know, in the second demo, I've been showing you how I can use it to set under the eyes with concealer. And you can see that it does a great job. You're not really seeing any powder or any accumulation. That's a Valentino concealer, was, which is, you know, like kind of my current favorite. And it does a great job. You could also see that, you know, using the setting powder over the blush veil really gives it a nice diffuse look. And this, again, is a setting powder, not technically a finishing powder, but as you can see, it can be used that way. So let's go ahead and take a look at just a couple other powders and, you know, do what we can with swatches for these. So this is a Suku powder that came out, uh, I believe this was last year. And this one here is called the Smooth Matte Loose Powder. And you can see you have kind of more of like that net type uh, 
product, the, the more like a cushion powder. And this is also a pink, but I wanted to show you how this pink compares. You can see that this pink is significantly whiter and there is gonna be a little bit more whiteness that does not go away with the Suku compared to the Jones Road. The Jones Road really becomes more seamless and it is um, just a little bit, you know, it's a little more pink. And then I also wanted to just take a quick look at the Givenchy Prism Libra Powder. This is shade number one. So we have a few different shades mixed in here. Now with these powders, you're always getting four all together. <coughs> Um, they do, you know, I haven't seen it sold in a while, but it's not on the list of discontinued products that they had a translucent matte one that was just white, but I haven't seen that in a long time. But here's the Givenchy and you can see that this one will give you just like, um, you know, it's, it's matte, but, and they do have sparkling versions by the way, but this particular shade is matte, yet there is a little bit of a luminous sheen to it that you still get. So it's not a flat matte. The Jones Road is gonna be slightly more matte in appearance. Now the Givenchy is intended for setting or finishing, whereas the Jones Road specifically specifies setting. So just something to note there, the Givenchy in shade one is also just gonna be a little bit more white when you blend it out. Uh, versus the Jones Road for either the white or the pink. But you can see the main difference there is just that you get a little bit more of a luminosity there with the Givenchy. And just a quick look at the Jones Road powder brush. This one here is the Refer 30, which is undyed goat hair. This is kind of my closest in size and shape, so I just wanted to show you that. The Refer is gonna be more flat top. Size-wise, they are about the same. Now, the Jones Road brush is synthetic. Um, you know... The, the brush is, it's a nice fluffy powder brush, but I, tech, I, you know, there are just others that I prefer to this. So, you know, it's a nice synthetic brush, but if I were going to purchase synthetic brushes, um, there are some other brands that I prefer over the Jones Road ones personally, such as the um, BK Beauty. So these are one that I prefer over the um, Jones Road synthetic brushes as well because their fibers are a little bit softer whereas the Jones Road you can feel a little bit more waviness in the individual hairs. It gives it a little bit of a rougher texture on the skin compared to these BK Beauty brushes. So this is the concealer brush in A506. This is actually a really great brush. I love the size of it. I love the you know flexibility of it. It works great for concealer. It also works great for highlighter, particularly. I like it for cream highlighter, but you can use it for powder. You can use it under the eyes. It's great for, you know, if you're doing like contouring your nose or something like that. It's just a really great all around brush. So thank you so much to BK Beauty for sending me this. I was actually trying to purchase the Angie Hot and Flashy set when they had their sale and it was out of stock. So I'm on the list for notifications. So stay tuned for more of those when those uh, actually come back in stock. But I would have to say this brush is definitely a winner. So thank you so much. This is everything for today. I hope this was helpful. I'd love to know your thoughts on these and you know if you've tried any of these products and if you have any interest in any of these. So thank you so much for tuning in and I hope to see you again very soon. So have a wonderful day.